Exquisite X5 is synonymous with luxury. This South African build-up builds the best of the best. Let's go and see what we think of this boat. So welcome to our tour of the Exquisite X5. Let's kick this category off with a good look at the helm position. Over to Teresa now. So, Exquisite X5. Yeah. Helm so station. This is the home of the Exquisite and... Holy gosh! <laughs> I thought the Privilege had a good homing position. I didn't think that it could get better, but um, this has certainly given it a run for its money, the Privilege. This is absolutely amazing. So, I'm going to start by just talking about the basics, visibility and protection. Those two things are a must for us and those boxes are definitely ticked. So a couple of things that I really like, we are in a fully enclosable um, kind of helm position enclosure. This can turn into an enclosure as well. It comes down and, and you're completely um, protected and enclosed. And there's also visibility of all four corners of the catamaran from here as well. And um, what I really like as a shorter person is that they have a fold out uh, footrest so you can actually kind of stand up on, on a little um, platform and get even better visibility. Um, so let's take a look at a few of the features of the um, helm. We just had a little tour with the owner of the company actually and he pointed out some really uh, fantastic features of the helming position. All of the lines, he said, every single line on this boat, including all three reefing lines, come back to the helm. So there's not a single line that is not run back to the helm. So we'll have a look now at all the other features of this helm position, of which there are many. Now let's start with this beautiful padded and very sturdy helm. This is going to be a comfortable place to sit on night passage. You have a full hard dodger or screen and 360 visibility throughout the boat. The instrument system is clear from forward facing cameras, downward facing cameras, and that electronic throttle to all the lines being labeled and led back to your fingertips. Sailing this boat is going to be a breeze if you pardon the pun. Other things we also love to see on these boats is where the lines are all captive. They run through clutches, down past the winches, and then are captive in hidden bins. Nothing to trip up there. And finally, the life raft position. While I would always like to see these life rafts on the transom underneath the helm seat and fully accessible and visible is not bad at all. You'll be able to get this to the transom and off the back of the boat very, very easily. And in the case of inversion, a hydrostatic release should see it popping to the surface. So how are we gonna score the exquisite X5 in this first category? This is an easy one, 10 out of 10. I really can't fault this at all. Congratulations, what a superb boat. Now, category two, as you know, is my favorite and it's build quality. And where do these tests always start? Yep, into the engine bay, I dive. So access is far enough away from the transom for me to feel happy and access is good and easy. There are easy steps to get down into the bay and there are lovely features in here. A fire suppression system, fantastic. This is an electric oil remover. Again, such a boon for those of you offshore cruising. There's also really sturdy mechanisms, really good rose joints. The steering is absolutely fantastic, overbuilt. And look at this, the thickness of this sound insulation is absolutely superb. There's gonna be not a lot of engine noise coming up towards you, that's fantastic. Moving forward to the deck, look at this, solid handrails throughout. I am weak at the knees with this level of safety. Plus, look at this, even more sturdy handrails. Why don't more manufacturers build these in as standard? It's not difficult or expensive to do. So we have a very, very safe deck space. The hatches aren't flush, but the next incarnation of this boat, yes, they will be. Now look at this rain capture system, a dedicated capturing system with gutters where the filler spout actually collects the water. And while you're thinking, well, actually, how's that gonna collect water? They have a 3D printed component, a little funnel to make sure all that precious rainwater goes directly into your tanks, amazing. Other things to note on deck, the things like the gooseneck, these are really well built. The boat was solid and of high quality. Inside this trend for quality is further continued. Look at this, forks, knives, no, a dedicated tool closet. Look at that, oh my, I am weak 
week with the quality and the thought that has gone into making this boat the perfect circumnavigator in the words of Exquisite. As we further look around the boat, the fixtures and fittings are all top of the line. Stainless steel, integrated appliances, dishwashers and fridges. But now onto things like wood veneer. This wood veneer is extra thick and so well put together. The finish is divine. And there are clever little things like dedicated cupboards under the stairs, just so that you can utilize that space. It's not just form, it is also function, and that is what I really love to see in a boat. The edgings to the steps, again, solid wood. I know that this is a luxury and bespoke catamaran, but these little touches are what really shows and makes the difference between an average boat and a brilliant boat. As we move into the cockpit, you can see that the trend for design and quality continues from this hand inlaid table with the map of the world to the integrated rain shower, just in case you need to wash off after a swim. The cockpit has things like hammock attachment points, a barbecue, a bait table, and look at this, the cockpit tent sits in its own recess, so it's completely out of the way. The stainless steel is overbuilt and super sturdy. This is a well-built boat. I absolutely love the design and the thought that's gone into it. Finally, before I let myself talk, the cabinetry and the storage are absolutely amazing. I, I just, I can't fault it. Over to me. Look, they've talked us through the, this boat in depth and he's been very kind to kind of run through this. It is supremely well thought out and there are features on this boat that I've never seen on another boat, for instance here. They've got both induction hobs and gas hobs, so it runs on lithium batteries. Island unit, Fantastic, the appliances are all top notch. There's a, a Bosch dishwasher there, of all things. Mm -hmm. um, they were saying that all their, um, all their milling for the Corian is done in-house. They've got CNC milling machines. So those five access milling machines and everything is done to the most impeccable standard. Like an absolutely impeccable standard. I mean, I am blown away by the quality of the fittings on this boat. Um, I mean, having drawers this deep on double reinforced hinges and runners so that, you know, it's, you know, absolutely amazing. I'm absolutely blown away by this one. I know I've said it. And, and, it, and there's a, um, what's it called? A, an extraction fan, yeah, which we'd never see. Extractor there. Um, this table, and I, they did get it out for us. So it's a coffee table, but it kind of does this mad kind of like origami thing into a dining room <laughs> table. Super clever as an idea. Um, like very, very impressed with that. The saloon, yeah, it's a, this is the closest I have ever seen a catamaran, a, a catamaran coming to the level at which I would want a luxury apartment to be. And I think if, you know, if this is what we always say about catamarans, we have a lot of people that follow us and a lot of people that we know that want to go from this kind of like they live in luxury apartments or apartments and then they want to go cruising and they want to take that level of luxury with them. And this actually does it at a price point, which is for what this boat is. I actually don't think it's overly, it's, it's crazy expensive. Well, we'll talk about value. Yeah, we will talk about value for money. Mm. So that, from a point of view of where you are sitting here, it's an absolutely incredible nav station. I'm super impressed with it, lots of visibility. Everything is electric, so, you know, and there are certain things on this boat that I'm like, wow. Um, apart from things like cameras up in the spreaders so you can see forward, speakers in the spreaders. Is it yeah. ostentatious? Absolutely. Um, everything run by iPads, so the entire system is electronic. Um, and everything customizable. It, 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 I think it's the closest I have seen a boat coming to being a spaceship. Talk, talk about the, um, how the, uh, all your manuals and your service numbers and everything is kept on a cloud on um, the yeah. access by the iPad. And the, the, so, the, as, yeah. so another thing about this boat that they've talked us through is how everything that they do, um, everything, the, the boat speaks remotely to, to their kind of like mothership. Or the factory so if there's a problem with it they know how to they diagnose the problem for you everything has redundancy they provide a standard sets of spares for everything so there are pumps um, there are and most of the things are standalone so there are standalone air conditioners there are standalone water pumps it is so well thought out there's I, I cannot there is n almost nothing I can fault about this boat which is strange to me because normally I'm like oh yeah well this 
I think anything anything that I pick at this boat up will be splitting hairs. Mm. You know, even um, you know, he was saying, okay, I could go. Oh, the, the life raft position is not brilliant. And really, I would say that that life raft, if you had to, if in the case of a fire, you would struggle to get that to the transom to launch it. I would prefer something transom mounted. It's a minor point because it still has really good access. Mm. That's the first thing. Second thing is they don't have flush mounted hatches, but they're changing that in later incarnations of the boat. So that's done. The only thing I could really pick up on, and it's not a point that we're assessing, is the styling of the boat. I personally think it's too spaceship-like for me, but that's not a criteria to assess, assess a boat by. Mm. Everything else is absolutely beautiful. Um, I have nothing else I can say about it, really. So another thing about this spaceship boat um, <laughs> is that the maintenance schedules are all set by the factory. The boat communicates with the factory um, through, not, cloud. Through, a, through cloud storage yeah. so they can tell you what needs maintaining what needs replacing what and it literally the boat runs itself I mean I it's got to the point where to me this is part of this is like sorcery it's it's not it's, it's this very high tech it's not sailing this is this is just witchcraft I mean mm -hmm. really a couple hundred years ago you'd be burnt at the stake for for designing this this is this is beyond futuristic absolutely fantastic I think this reminds me of the first time I set uh, foot inside a Tesla, the motor car, I actually saw the future of what automotive technology was going to be. And I think that this is a trailblazer for the most technologically advanced boat I have yet to see in the cruising market. It's phenomenal. So no surprise that the Exquisite X5, we're going to score it a 10 out of 10. Well done. This boat has yet to drop a point. Let's see how she does in further categories. And now a brief interlude for some blatant self-promotion. Annapolis was an amazing show and we have so many more reviews for you. So as per your requests, we have the Antares, the Nice, and the Majestic Maverick, Balance St. Francis and the Seawind 1260. So if you haven't already subscribed, just click down there and you will never miss an episode. So thanks for that. Let's start this important category of interior design and practicality as a living space by looking at the cockpit. The cockpit is chock full of features that we probably missed even on the day, let alone remember to film. But a couple of important things to note is that there are multiple lounging and seating areas, which is really important when you're living aboard. Trust me, you want to be comfortable when you're sitting in the cockpit, which is where you spend 90% of your time. There are other features such as plenty of shade from that hardtop bimini. We saw that barbecue just now and there's even this little day bed with an adjustable backrest which is a really cool feature. Let's take a look at the inside now. We've already seen quite a few features of the interior of this boat including a relatively thorough walkthrough of the galley by Nick just earlier and we've also discussed the nav station. I'll go through the galley again in just a moment just to pick up a few extra features but for now let's take a look at that fantastic U-shaped settee with the adjustable table, brilliant lounging area with fantastic visibility. Of course you have a massive flat screen TV in a boat of this caliber and that clearly Clearly is retractable as well so it can be stowed away. Before we go back to the galley let's just take note of the huge amount of cold storage that you have just here. In the galley itself you have all the mod cons, you've got ovens, you've got dishwashers, you've got an extraction fan, everything. You have some beautiful fittings and fixtures and plenty of bench space and storage. We've already heard about the nav station from Nick, but it's worth pointing out the fantastic visibility from this position. I think this would be a great spot to carry out a night watch, perhaps on a long passage. So now let's take a listen to what I had to say on the day about the saloon. So the saloon is uh, fabulous. This entire area is very open and spacious and gorgeous and the visibility is just perfect i mean i can just imagine sitting here at anchor in you know the bahamas the caribbean a beautiful south pacific island anywhere and you can just sit here and enjoy your surroundings while being inside and do it with the utmost amount of comfort by the way uh, as nick already said this table folds out in a very kind of transformer-esque way into a dining table which is great uh, that's you know relatively a relatively common feature we've seen quite a few boats that do that it's really fantastic and uh, the only criticism that I have is that all of the hatches of which there are three are all mounted in the ceiling 
Um, there are no forward facing hatches, uh, which when you're at anchor and you're relying on that breeze to come through to cool the boat down, uh, you know, it would be nice if there was nice big forward facing opening hatches. That is something that I really value personally. As we've said, this boat uh, is so technologically advanced that you really, if you're buying this boat, I really honestly think that you would be happy just to turn the air conditioning on. The air conditioning is all zoned, so you can just pick your zone and put it all on via the iPad. Um, and so you don't really, you could just put the air conditioning on in this particular area and, and you'd be perfectly comfortable. Another thing that um, the owner of Exquisite was saying is that the cockpit tent uh, encloses the cockpit completely to the point where you can enclose the cockpit and put the air conditioning on and that actually cools down the entire cockpit as well. So yes, no need to rely on uh, kind of nature's cooling method, uh, you can just pop the aircon on. And not the way that we live, but um, that, I mean, you know. Certainly, if I had this boat and uh, I needed to cool myself down in the afternoon, I, I wouldn't hesitate to put the AC on. Um, it's just beautiful. What more can I say? It's really gorgeous. So this is the master hull of the Exquisite X5. And, I mean, it's a fantastic master hull. Just what I would expect. It's a 50-foot catamaran and it's not performance-based, so the hulls aren't too narrow. So there's loads and loads of space for storage. There is so much storage here. It is just... I mean, I don't know how... I would even fill all these storage um, cupboards and drawers and whatnot. The bed is not an island berth, uh, so that is just a tiny, tiny, tiny little thing. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult to be making the bed every day when it's not an island berth, and when one person gets up in the middle of the night, i.e. Nick, um, you know, you can disturb your partner if you're getting up um, and having to kind of scoot down to the end of the bed. However, it's a really big bed, and it, I'm sure, is very, a very comfortable place to sleep. In terms of ventilation, that is, as you know by now, something that I always look at because I know what it's like to live in the tropics and you need to remain as cool as possible on board. The ventilation is alright. It's only got one smaller opening hatch in the actual cabin itself, but everything is very open and you've got two large hatches in the kind of corridor um, of the owner's hull. So I suspect that if you were to open up those hatches then you would get quite a nice through breeze. It doesn't have an opening hatch to the side so um, that is one area for improvement that could be made if they wanted to. But the thing about this boat is that I don't really think that you would be opening up the hatches very often because you have your air conditioner and you have a big gen set and you have loads of solar you probably would put lithium on board and I think honestly like people who are buying this boat a little bit like the privilege the natural ventilation isn't such a big deal because you can just run the air con um, so it's like a different way of living to the way we live we don't have any air con we don't have a gen set we just have to kind of make do with fans there are fans like places to put fans uh, but yeah, you have air conditioning on this boat yeah, this and you'd probably be happy to, you know, put that on. So, not such a big deal. But, yeah, there's, the ventilation is, is okay. Let's go and have a look at the um, shower room. I'll just actually quickly show you, like, the walk-in wardrobe. Um, so, ah, oh, okay, so they've used that as a larder. Yeah. And then there's um, space in here that goes all the way back. And as you can see, there's loads of drawers and everything here. Um, and this isn't the only storage in this, um, in the master hull. There's underfloor storage, there's storage under the uh, stairs, there's obviously storage under the bed. There's cupboards in the actual cabin itself. So yeah, there's plenty of storage options. So one thing about this boat is that there is loads of natural light. There are plenty of really big port lights. Uh, they're not opening hatches, but they do let in a lot of natural light and it makes the hull feel really nice and light and spacious. And of course you've got all these big window, uh, big mirrors on this side as well, so that adds to that feeling of spaciousness. The shower room is, I mean, it's perfect. What more do you want? You've got, you don't have a separate toilet, so we have seen some of catamarans of this kind of ilk, they have a separate toilet, which is nice. Hardly a deal breaker for, for us anyway. You've got this fantastic sink, which is just like such, everything's so beautifully designed, you know, everything is just really, really beautiful to look at as well as very functional. This sink is just stunning. And then a huge um, separate shower, um, yeah, with loads of shelves and storage and everything there. There's another shelf up there, I don't know if you could do anything with that. But 
I mean, everything's just fantastic. I mean, what's not to like? Let's take a look at the guest accommodations now. So we descend into the other hull and first take a look at the forward cabin. As you can see, plenty of storage is a continuing theme on this boat and everything is very beautiful. That fall cabin is particularly lovely and also there's lots of little features like those USB charging points, plug sockets, light switches etc at the foot of the bed. Your guests that are using the fall cabin have their own separate shower room and heads area. We'll go into a little bit more detail on the design of that in just a moment. But here is the after cabin and as you can see the ventilation is very much the same. You've got that large opening hatch up above. You also have somewhere to mount a fan um, and plenty of natural sunlight coming into that cabin as well as, you know what I'm gonna say, plenty of storage space. Let's take a closer look at the shower room and heads. So the one downfall of this design is that with that frosted glass, you don't have a lot of privacy. So if you're sharing with someone who is not your partner, that might, might be an issue. There's just the one door and it separates the shower so you can have a separate shower and then it also closes off the entire heads shower area. So that door just swings around and encloses off the different compartments of this little pod like shower room. As you can see, all the fittings and fixtures are top notch and as the owner of the company pointed out to us, they really only use the very best component parts and you can see that here. It's not often I am wow to this level and Look, when I, I've only ever seen this boat on reviews uh, and I've only ever seen pictures of it outside and the st starting aside, this boat is amazing. Like properly amazing. The, the attention to detail uh, of little things, I don't think I've ever seen attention like it. Like for instance, as Tamas explained, um, you know, even the edging of the foam, kill, foam cord panels, they take a little bit out so they can put thicker wood edges to it. It literally, everything, everything is just thought out so well. I am absolutely blown away by this. Blown away by it. It is like, it is how a boat should be designed. Redundancy after redundancy after redundancy. Look, electronic backup systems. There's a backup system for the, you know, if, if your electronics go down and your computers go down, there's a backup system with an old set, you know, traditional set of, of breakers. You know, little things like the depth of the cupboards, the way TVs slide out, it is all like, um, yeah, I am absolutely blown away by this boat. Blown away by it. So how are we going to score the Exquisite X5? Yes, it's another 10 out of 10. A perfect 30 out of 30. What a fantastic boat. Now let's look at some statistics for the Exquisite X5. She is 51 feet or 15.44 meters in length. The beam is 26 foot, which is eight meters and the draft 4.4, so 1.35 meters, quite shallow draft. Now the thing you need to be aware of here is the displacement. This boat is 21 tons. That is the light displacement weight. This is significantly heavier than comparative boats in this class. For instance, the Discovery 50 and the Privilege 510 both weigh in at 16 tons. However, as Tamas, the owner of Exquisite, points out, this figure is erroneous. The weight of the boat is so high because the standard equipment options are so extensive. This means that while she won't perform like a performance catamaran, she will be comparable to the Discovery and the Privilege. So with all that extra weight, we are awarding the Exquisite X5 a 3 out of 10 for performance. Now our final category is value for money for the exquisite X5. Bear in mind the currency conversion is May 2019 and this does not include local taxes. Now the price for the exquisite X5 is 1.3 million US dollars. That's a million British pounds and 1.1 million euros. However, this is the first review where we are not putting a value fully loaded. The reason for why is that the list below is the items that the boat comes equipped with as standard. This to us represents fantastic value for money. A lot of the big ticket items are already included in the price. And if you compare the price of a comparative yacht, for instance, a privilege or the discovery, you will find that by the time you've added all the extras that you want onto that yacht, the prices are very, very similar.
With the yacht being built in South Africa and thus not subject to European labor rates, we are awarding a 6 out of 10 for the Exquisite X5. That was the very beautiful Exquisite X5. Um, I think we can all agree that is a phenomenal, phenomenal catamaran. Yes, absolutely. Now, uh, as with everything that we do, as we do with these last few sections, we will do the good points and then we'll do the bad points, if there are any. So, uh, positive choice. Well, I think that the main positive was just the standard of build and the quality of the, um, the fit and the finish, all of the component parts. Everything was just absolutely top notch. There was literally nothing in terms of build quality that you could fault, or certainly that we could find. No. So uh, it's definitely had the wow factor from that point of view. And I think that uh, as far as quality is concerned, it really can't be beat. It was fantastic. Yes, I'm going to take a break from my usual kind of like rabbiting on and just put it into three words. Attention to detail. That boat is very well designed. The They have considered every aspect of the functionality yeah. of the Exquisite X5 yeah. and I could not and cannot fault it from that point of view. So amazing, amazing craft. Okay, uh, negatives. Uh, shall I go first or shall you? You go. Okay, um, I can only think of two negatives. Uh, one is a minor point, one is a slightly less minor point. The first minor point is the styling. Now we are not judging or assessing the styling of the Exquisite X5, but it is not going to be to everyone's tastes. I personally think it's too much spaceship and not enough boat. <laughs> um, but we are not assessing the aesthetic of the boat uh, as we, you know, score these uh, the, these catamarans, and, and you're talking about from the outside. From the outside, yeah. yeah. So the styling is not really my cup of tea, but I can see how it would be in the same way that paisley dresses aren't my cup of tea, <laughs> but they are for certain people. Uh, the second point, and I think this is a more valid point, is the performance of this boat and the weight. Now, the exquisite website puts the X5 at. 21,000 kilograms unladen weight, that is 21 tons, which is huge for a 50 foot boat. Mm. Now, the only way you can really assess this is to take a comparative selection of catamarans and see how they weigh. So if we start with the um, Utre 51, Utre 51 weighs 10.4 tons, so less than half the weight of, um, of the Exquisite X5. Now, of course, you're going to say, well, that is a performance uh, cruising catamaran, and so weight is an issue here. They, they go out to say weight. Um, but let's look to comparative boats. For instance, we could look at the Discovery 50, and we can look at the Privilege 510. Both those boats come in at 16 tons. That is five tons lighter. Mm. So the Exquisite X5 is 33% heavier than the Privilege and the Discovery. And that is going to affect performance because the waterline length is about the same, the hull width is about the same, and the sail area is about the same. And realistically, you can put a bed sheet on a dumpster and in enough wind it will sail. Uh, so performance is not going to be, it's, you're not going to get performance on this. No. Uh, you can, you know, um, but, you know, you don't buy Rolls Royce to go hooning around at 300 kilometers an hour, do you? No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. So if you want to get around the world in absolute luxury at a sedate and regal pace, then the exquisite X5 is a real contender, yeah. a real contender, because the, the cost of it, it comes very, very uh, highly specced. Mm. Um, it, it, it's comparable. If you've got that much money to spend on a catamaran, it's a comparable, it's a comparable amount of money. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure there's anything else I can say. A beautiful boat, absolutely beautiful, and thank you to Tamas for uh, showing us extensively the Exquisite X5. Now, moving on, we were in Annapolis for four to five days, and we have seven new reviews coming out. So, if you are interested in seeing what we thought of lots of other catamarans, then uh, please click down below uh, to subscribe, and as of course, uh, Always, please feel free to vote. This 
set of reviews is made by you, the people who vote. So there's a link there for you to vote. And this means that you're not getting any dealer bias. You are not getting the, the reviews from people that are just throwing their own spin on things. Uh, the final scores for the ultimate countdown of the best Catalan will come from your scores. So down there, click away and leave your vote. So thank you so much for watching. We'll be back soon with yet another review. Goodbye.